Welcome to episode 43 of the Whatnots Review Show. Every week we pick a story and we talk about it. Could be a TV show, a movie, an anime, a manga, a comic book, an audio drama, all kinds of entertainment. We watch it, read it, listen to it, etc. And then we come back here and we talk about it. My name is Melissa Wilkinson and I am joined by my co-captain Kyle Springer. That's me. What up? It is you. Kyle, how are you today? Down. The system <laughs> is down. <laughs> The, the the system is still chugging along on my computer. We were Very talking good. about that on uh, on the captain's log the other day. My computer has been acting strange, so I, I, I need to look into that. Thankfully, our video is working this yeah, week again. Yeah, good. It better. So, uh, yeah. How are you? I'm good. It mm. is, uh, as we record this, the big game day. And yes, I don't. The puppy bowl. Yes, that's what I'm paying attention to. <laughs> so as soon as we're done here, I'm going to make me some snacks and I'm going to go watch the puppy bowl. And then during, like, the real football game, when nobody's going to be out anywhere, I'm going to the mall and there's going to be, like, no, I'm going to get a good parking space. There's not going to be any lines. Just me and the mall. Christmas shopping done. It'll be <laughs> great. In February, yes. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. So what are we talking about today, Melissa? We are talking about something that is as cute as puppies, pretty much. This is the 2007 TV series Pushing Daisies, created by Brian Fuller. We watched the first season of this, which was nine episodes. Yeah. It's uh a really fun show. This was something I watched while it was on, and I've been meaning to revisit for years. And finally, you picked this one. So I was able to sit down and do that. And it was a really fun rewatch for me. And this was the first time you saw it, right? Yes, this was my first time watching it. I had heard good things. It's it's one of those shows that you hear uh, like TV fanatics yeah. talk about all the time and be like, it was genius. It was so good. I don't know why it only got two seasons. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, it was it was just one that like, huh? I I always hear about this thing. I I just don't know what it's talking about. Um, so I I you you did your round of kind of Valentine's Day stuff. Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to be pitching some more Valentine's related yes. stuff after this. So we each have a turn Good. doing some romance stuff. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, it was just like, huh, now is my chance. I yeah. Can watch this. Yeah. Yeah. This is an important watch. I think it's like a real interesting corner of the television landscape. And I think it's a definitely worth somebody's time to go watch this weird thing that tv tried to do in the mid 2000s and it worked in our hearts <laughs> yes i i think it still would work yeah it, i think it might work even better today probably i i it's one of those things we try and recommend st mm -hmm. uh, stuff hey if you liked pushing jay-z's go watch yeah. these things and yeah some, sometimes it's hard to c come up with stuff mm -hmm. Just because we try and get a range of stuff that people know and is popular, yeah. like Mission Impossible, to mm -hmm. stuff that like not very many people know about or is a little more obscure. And so it's like, huh, what what can I yeah. recommend for that? This one, though, I instantly knew. I was like, oh, yeah. I have two things that oh, uh -oh, no. Melissa is falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> um but I, 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 I instantly had two things. I was like, "Oh, I yeah. know exactly what this Me is too. like," and I, I can re recommend some stuff easily. Yeah, it's got like quite a creative pedigree behind it that led me to yeah. some neat recommendations. But Kyle, what is the show actually about? Uh, so the show follows this young boy, and for most of the show, adult man named mm -hmm. Ned. Uh, Ned finds out that he has the power to bring dead things back to life by touching them. Yes. He also learns that if he touches them again, they die again. Yeah. And they stay dead for good. Yep, he uh, can touch something and it's alive for a minute. And then if it stays alive, something else has to die in its place. Yeah, and if he ever touches that thing again, caveats. it's permanently dead. Yeah, yeah, it's got a little bit of rules to it. 
but um the the, the main c- crux of the story is that when he's in adult uh he ends up kind of becoming a somewhat of a business p- p- partner with the private detective who wants mm-hmm. to solve these murder c- cases uh and so he uses uh this guy's power to wake the dead people back up find out who killed them and then he touches them again and they they go back to being dead and then the story kind of begins when he sees the murder of his childhood sweetheart or he or he doesn't see the murder yeah. but he he finds out that his childhood sweetheart has been murdered so they go to do their thing and wake her up and see who 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 did it and he's like what if you didn't have to be dead what if we just uh-huh. kept you alive and so they do and uh his childhood sweetheart is alive uh and they kind of have to figure out how to do that while still solving mysteries yeah and running a pie restaurant <laughs> and falling in love without touching because if he touches her again she'll die and yeah. so it 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 seems kind of morbid at first of like oh mm-hmm. this guy can touch dead things and all yeah. of that stuff but uh it ends up being this really sweet rom-com uh it's very wacky very w- w- whimsical mm-hmm. uh, a lot of bright colors and oh stuff boy, like yes. that it, it certain things also like remind me of dr seuss in in the, like it's that yeah. kind of whimsical like you will get characters that have At like times, super yeah. cutesy alliterative names yeah yeah so it's it's a wild ride mm-hmm. definitely uh did i miss anything in the uh, that's the main synopsis. part of it. It's a it's a romantic comedy where they solve murders, and there's a pie restaurant, and occasionally there's singing. Yes, there in um, season a, one. There's like oh, two times where they yeah like break out into song. Two or three little musical numbers. Yeah, that too. There's a lot in this show. It's packed um, full like a big a big tall pie. Big fat pie. Yum. Mm. Um. So I. I have to say I'm I'm not the type of guy to watch a bunch of romance stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I I'm not super into musicals. Melissa, the, all all of this is more your forte. Yeah, this is exactly Melissa the show. But I really loved the show. Good, it was really I'm glad. Good. It was fantastic. Uh, so even if uh you think you might not like it or if you kind of want to recommend this to someone or if if you liked it and you want to watch it with someone who you're like i don't know maybe they won't like it because it's kind of rom commy. uh the show is still good it's actually funny Mm -hmm. um so it's 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 not just like cheesy will they yeah they stuff it's really sharply written it's very It's, it's very well constructed yeah, this show was created by Brian Fuller, who's had mm-hmm. quite a list of television products. He's had a c- couple. Uh, I know he worked on Hannibal after this, and then mm-hmm. American G- 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 Gods, which are two very different shows yeah, than, did, than what this is. <laughs> did he also work on Six Feet Under? I don't know. I don't rem- remember the name on Six Feet uh, Under. I, I didn't I know. like Six Feet Under. <laughs> oh, I've never overall. really seen it. I just know this guy already had like a couple hits under his belt, and then he did Pushing Daisies, and people are excited for it. But also, like, what is this? This is well, weird. It it. it I'll I'll bring uh, Six Feet Under back up once we get into okay. spoiler territory. Territory there, but um, yeah. Anything else we want to say before spoiler uh, alerts? No, do we want to do our recommendations now? Yeah, sure. If, if, if you want to do recommends. Because I would say that if you w- watch Pushing Daisies, which you should, like season one's just nine episodes. It's pretty short. It's streaming Even if it's... for free on CW Seed. That's uh, where it is. Yeah, you can, you can, I, 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 I literally typed in stream Pushing Daisies and that was the first <laughs> thing that popped up. So 
CW Seed. Okay. I knew it must have been somewhere. I went looking for it on all the major streaming services and I couldn't find it. So I just went and got my brother's DVDs instead, which is well, also fine. Is probably better anyways. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, if you watch this, which you should, and you like the murder mystery part of it the most, but you also like how colorful it is, and you also like that it's full of food, go check out Hannibal. Because okay. Hannibal is like, Hannibal is like dark pushing daisies, dark sinister pushing daisies, but it's still got that like lushness to it, kind of. It's a very different show, but you can definitely Never tell it's it. created by the same guy. I watched the first season of it, I think. It's an okay. interesting one. And this show is also executive produced by Barry Sonnenfeld, and he directed the first couple episodes. This is the guy who directed, like, the Men in Black movies. Oh, okay. Which I love, and you can kind of see those in here. Weirdly enough, there's a lot of set design that reminds me of the way the Men in Black sets are done, which is a very specific thing, but it was always one of my favorite parts of those movies. Like, every location they went to was super cool looking. Those are uh, two things I wouldn't have thought to mention or this is what connect. i pay attention to is like rooms people are in i okay. love a good set decoration the room where it happens <laughs> yes uh, and he also has been doing that series of unfortunate events show for netflix that makes and, more sense and this reminds me of that a lot like really kind of whimsical and offbeat and like a little melancholy but Ultimately, kind of like a fun storybook kind of adventure, yeah. but with death in it. Yeah. Good stuff. For me, I have uh, an audio drama to recommend. Wooden Overcoats. That's the one I knew it was going to be. Yes. 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 Uh, so th this show has a lot of good narrator, like narration on on yeah. t on top of it, and Wooden uh, Overcoats has that same style of narr narration. Um, and it's 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 a comedy. It's the same type of hu hu humor mm -hmm. and situational c c comedy. Um, I, I, th I think it would be a great fit. Um, but if you are more into like the detective, like murder mystery, each episode is a new case yeah. type of thing. I zombie on, oh, C on CW I've never seen that is, one. I fucking love that show. It is great. Oh, uh, huh. it's, it's based off a comic book though. From what I understand, the TV show basically just takes the name and that's kind of it. Um, but it is about this g g girl uh, who dies and becomes a zombie and comes back to life. But she's she can pass as somewhat normal as long mm -hmm. as she eats b b brains. Um, and so she gets a judge job at a morgue. And uh, she helps to solve murder m <laughs> mysteries because also when she eats other people's brains... She like gets their personality <laughs> and mannerisms, and can see their wow. like l last couple like thoughts okay. and stuff like that. So it's it's this kind of wacky stuff. Like who who is the main character gonna be this week? Is she oh. gonna be a pro quarterback on on a football team? Is she <gasps> gonna be a sex worker? Is she gonna okay. be some kind of valley girl? Is she gonna be some hard boiled detective who's too old for, so, for this shit? So this is you know? like part quantum leap and part chew. Y yeah, kind of. <laughs> Wow. I so, didn't know that's what that show was about. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. Uh, so I highly recommend those. Okay. Um, I, I don't know if I have any housekeeping besides go like, share, subscribe, yeah, sell your soul, tell a friend, us. hit the bell, do everything you need to do on the social media stuff. I know I have my rigmarole. Uh, to get you guys to do all of that stuff. But it really does help. Go review yes. us on iTunes. Uh, we could absolutely use your help here on twitch.tv slash the whatnots, which is where you can watch this show live every mm -hmm. Sunday, usually at noon uh, Eastern time. Uh, this week we are recording it an hour l l later because uh, yeah. Melissa, you had some morning plans. Yeah, some yeah, plans. I had a, a friend spend in the night, and then we had brunch, so we nudge, we nudged this back a little bit. 
There you go. That that works. Um, but typically, that's every Sunday at 12 noon Eastern time on twitch.tv slash the whatnots or on the whatnots.com slash live streams. We'd love to have you in the chat with us discussing uh, the, the books or movies or whoa, whatever it is we're talking about week mm-hmm. in and week out. We hope you follow along at home. That being said, go follow us on YouTube. Yeah. Patreon I'll mention at the end of the Mm -hmm. the show. Let's get on to spoilers. Let's do it. Yeah, spoiler alert. Party people, from here on out, we are getting into... uh, We're we're, we're sticking our fingers into all sorts of pies. Yes. Here with with this We're digging all kinds of things up. Um, So, yeah. I I was pleasantly surprised with this show. I'm glad... Because I I had fond memories of it, but like kind of vague memories of it. Because like I said, this is from 2007, which is a long time ago now. And so my brain just like compressed it down to like the basic facts of the show. But when I watched it again, like, oh, I remember everything now. And it's so good. And this was such a nice rewatch for me. It holds up in a weird way. Like, I I, I, I think there are a lot of like special effects and green yeah. screen stuff that did not age very yeah. well um but besides like those few mishaps uh i mean i guess they aren't really mishaps mm-hmm. but it, besides those few exceptions i think the the story of the show holds up the style is so stylized yes. that it, it can kind of yeah, like I, I can see it happening now and it looking the exact same. Mm-hmm. It's this very Dr. Seuss looking. Um, it's it, it's it's it, it's not Dr. Seuss all the way. It's like Dr. Yeah. Seuss d- dialed back to like two or three on a yeah. scale of one to ten. Throw in maybe a little bit of like Wes Anderson yes. color stuff like uh, the- and then turn the saturation up. Yeah, like the visual style of the show is that everything is very colorful and like every space they're in. This show is full of wallpaper. Every place they go to is completely wallpapered. Like it, Olive's bedroom, she has this intensely patterned like twall wallpaper on all of her walls and on the carpet and on her bedspread. And that's the pattern Visually, for her pajamas. there's a lot going on. It's chock full of things. It's a delight to watch yeah um but yeah i i i was surprised at how funny it was i thought it was going to get a little bit more into the romance of things Mm -hmm. and that's definitely there uh it's kind of one of the the main themes but it's not it's 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 it is but it's not a romance you know like they because they be because they can't physically touch Mm -hmm. There's there's not much they can do with that. Yeah, and it's and the not will they a... won't they isn't as like, oh my god, will they or won't they actually? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like an... well, maybe they'll kiss through yeah. plastic wrap. <laughs> it's an interesting romance because they are like attached to each other immediately. Like there's no question really of whether or not they're together. Like I think. You know, pretty early on in the series, Ned turns to Chuck and says, am I your boyfriend? And she's like, yeah, you're my boyfriend. We're just a different kind of boyfriend-girlfriend relationship. So that's not what the conflict is. The conflict is, like, both of them are so amped up and they have to, like, kiss each other through a sheet of saran wrap or, like, hold each other while they're both wearing full beekeeper suits. Yeah. And, the you know, the conflict is, like, are they going to turn to other people for this physical outlet that they cannot have with each other, which is really interesting. Yeah. Um, so it, it, it makes for some good situational comedy to the yeah. whole, like making out through the plastic mm-hmm. wrap is <laughs> both hilarious and disgusting at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> and it is a good show to like revisit because this came on when i was like 17 and like i got what it was about but now as an adult i'm like boy what a horny show (laughs) oh hell yeah lots of cleavage everywhere (laughs) lots of lots of cleavage (laughs) Mm, because it's just about like this there's this undercurrent of just sexual energy underneath a lot of stuff like people want to be with each other literally sexual 
tension. Yes. Because yes. they can't do it, but they're kind of doing everything they can. Like, they're right up against that line. We'll do everything we can yeah. think of to get right to the fence. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. And then you have Olive with this crush on Ned, and she's, like, always showing off and, like, trying to ring him in, and it yeah. never works. And she... I love Olive. Like, I remembered really liking Olive, and I love her so much more on this rewatch. Yeah, she she was really funny. She, 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 because she also does not, well, he, I mean, so Ned, because of his power, he's kind of mm-hmm. gotten used to not touching people. Yeah. That's just his thing. Doesn't do hugs, doesn't do all of that mm-hmm. stuff, but he can, like, People yeah. who are still alive, like he can, like he, if he wanted to, he could touch mm-hmm. uh, o- Olive. Mm-hmm. But he's just so like, I have this weird power. I don't want to yeah. touch anyone. Yeah, he's just very closed off and independent and solitary. It's just him and his dog, which he cannot touch, and yes. he has to pet with like a back scratcher or something. The dog and- did actually die, yeah. and so now he has. This- dog that he can't pet pet except for with a back scratcher (laughs) and his pies and like he uses rotten fruit and he touches the fruit and it becomes like full and plump and juicy and like as ripe as it could be but then he can't eat it because it would die again in his mouth i i didn't like think about that until he ate the pie at uh at the the aunt's Mm -hmm. house and i was like oh yeah like I I I I know he said that he can't touch it again. Like that made sense, but I didn't think about it after that. Like, mm-hmm. oh, once you make the actual pie, you can't eat your own pie. And so yeah. then he has this like minute long speech of of of, of just like I just have to know when the pie is ready. Like I can't practice. Yeah, I mean, I guess he could if he didn't. It, like if he actually bought fresh stuff Mm -hmm. but like it's his trade secret to like have the fruit be at their like most uh ripe i yeah i guess is is Mm -hmm. what is happening he has to bring it back to the dead he has to bring it back from the dead for it to be better alive than it ever was before it died for fruit at least (laughs) so he's he's just like i just have to know yeah there's like, so huh. many really interesting conflicts and tensions in this show and the way like it uses this magic realism and all these weird rules. And like the murder cases they're in are like they're not fluffy, but like they're light like they're lighter murder cases. They're a little goofy almost. And yeah. that's exactly what they should be because you don't need like serious life and death peril every episode because there's so much other tension already baked into the show like but um even just knowing like he's making these pies and he can't eat them it's not a huge conflict but like you know it and you think about it and it just sort of gives you this internal stress (laughs) (laughs) like there's a lot going on in the show and i think they do like pick and choose their moments and it never gets too melodramatic or anything like even in the season finale where ned has to confess to chuck like I accidentally killed your dad because I kept my mom alive too long. And this was when I was first discovering my powers and I didn't know, oh, if you keep a dead body alive, somebody else has to die in its place. So he confesses this to her and she's like, I get it. I just need to be mad at you for a little while. And like they're reconciled by the end of the episode, which feels weak, like when I'm just describing it, but it works because yeah. just the way they're looking at each other and they're both so sad and they're both so tense. Like the show gave itself everything it needed right at the beginning. And it just uses that so well throughout it. And it doesn't need to put a lot of extra drama into it. Yeah. Like it's really well constructed from the start. Yeah, it's it's an interesting thing because it's, yeah, he killed her father on accident but it, it, when she's a child, she like she she that same night, you know, his, his mom did dies. So yeah. when they're kids, she understands it as, hey, both of our parents just mm-hmm. d- d- died. 
uh, like I understand you there, but then when they're adults and they're in the situation they're in now, it's like, oh, I understand why your mom died now. She died before you saved her, yeah, and you didn't know, and so she, you know, you, you, you know, in in the time you ke- you kept her alive, that's when my dad died. You didn't know that was the connection. That was your first big hint mm-hmm. at like, hey, something. <laughs> just if you bring someone else back to life someone else is gonna have to take their place you know um but he hadn't really put two and two together yet and Mm -hmm. because he didn't know that he didn't know that if his mom kissed him good night that she would die again there and so she's now in the same spot of like i can't kiss you good night yeah but that's what your mom did and you guys didn't know and now i know so i like i i i understand yeah so weird stuff Mm -hmm. weird weird relationship um have have you ever seen the movie amelie i believe that's how you yes yeah i did see that once pronounce it i haven't seen that but i know that that movie was a big inspiration for this that makes sense i can see that um actually actually i did read that on the wikipedia page <laughs> oh yeah well researched um no so i the only thing i know about amelie is that like, there's the girl and there's like bright yellows and reds and yeah. stuff like it's it's the it's the saturation mm-hmm. um which is exactly what this show has there are bright yeah. yellows there's bright reds uh like really really deep blues and that mm-hmm. j- that just kind of helps add to the overall um I, I i would say excitement but that's not the right word but it one of the other things it does it just gives this life yes to everything's so show. vibrant yeah which is which is i i think exactly what he does with the um with with the with the f- f- fruit mm-hmm can you hear my roommate yes. in the back there? <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, which, which is I, I think exactly what he does with the pies when he touches them and brings them back to life. Um, like that, it, it brings them back to their most vibrant, uh-huh. which is kind of strange because that's not really how it works with the humans. But I guess they are like immediately like back like hey what's yeah. going on how are you you know like they don't skip a beat so there yeah is not it's this not like, like they uh, have to like wake up they're on? just yeah. instantly like hello yes here i am another talking human being hi how are you like <laughs> why am i laying every, down on this cold metal sheet <laughs> why everybody am i everybody that why he wakes I... <laughs> up is instantly like okay here's the deal i have things to tell you like yeah. they ask them questions they're like oh yeah well i know well, i don't know who killed me but i know how i was killed <laughs> yeah um so I, I i i think that matches the the show really well you mentioned mm-hmm. the set design just having yeah. so much visually going on um whether it's these like wacky like oompa loompa looking characters and set design stuff <laughs> well, it's... not that intense but like there's I mean... the candy factory episode and they are like extremely brightly colored uniformed like super quaffed hair like big jewelry like yeah. everything is larger than life everything it's... is it's chock full of like from yeah, school yeah. of rock <laughs> and he 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 walks in. He's like, "Hey guys, did you hear about the new candy store down the street? Gee, I sure like candy. You all should like candy too." And he just has the biggest smile, and it's it's just it's it's so cheesy, um, and it 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 works for the yeah. show. It's so fun. Everything is the most that it can be, and it's got. It's like when you're baking. To mm-hmm. make something sweeter, you put a little bit of salt in there. And the show always has the right amount of salt. It's got the cynicism of like Emerson or like Aunt Lily. Like there's enough like kind of cynicism and skepticism just like lightly sprinkled over the top to just sort of amp up everything else's 
positivity and energy. Like it's balanced really well. Like it's incredibly sweet, but it's not like toothache sweet. It knows how to do it. Yeah. Yeah, cuz some of the um the murder mysteries are pretty gruesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're, I mean, they're, like... they're they're still absolutely wacky. Mhm. Um but it, yeah, I I'm I'm thinking of the 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 candy shop one. Yeah. Oh um, yeah, he drowns right. in taffy. Yeah, and and when they bring him back to life, he's just like this pink mont. Like, can't yes. even speak because there's this taffy like deep down in his throat. <gasps> it's disgusting. Or yeah, the, or there's... Uh, the, I I, th- I think it's the airplane one where he crashes oh. through the windshield and he has all of the like he has all of the glass stuck in his face. It's like ugh. That does not yeah. look good. Yeah, I think the most gruesome one is that woman who gets burned because there oh, is yeah. a scratch and sniff book where when she scratches the little sniff pad, it scratch ignites and, and explodes in her face. <laughs> Just great. There's so many like really creative murders. Like nobody's ever like just stabbed in this show. Yeah. And and the ones who are stabbed are stabbed in really weird ways. Yeah, like, like Joel Joel McHale has a, a in <laughs> in episode mm-hmm. where he's a dog breeder and he's poisoned by one of his multiple wives mm-hmm. and he like he spills it and he slips and he falls on his like dog's comb which is sharp on whoa 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 one end and then he tries to get back up and slips again yeah. and stabs Ugh. himself again and just Brutal. multiple times does the same thing over and over again it's just like uh that is a terrible way to go this is such a storybook tale where you can do things like have a giant pie restaurant shaped like a pie mm-hmm. or make a living out of being a synchronized swimmer dressed as a mermaid. Yeah. Like things like that are completely viable life options. It's a storybook world, but there's also this like real undercurrent of pain. Like there is some gruesome violence in the show kind of masked under all of this like whimsicalness and like oh yeah when you think about it like repeatedly like slipping and getting stabbed in the stomach even if it is by like a decorative ornamental dog breeding you know dog grooming comb like that's oh it's visceral this is a very visceral show like yeah everything that looks beautiful there's also stuff that looks like oh it looks painful it looks disgusting like the rotten fruit is rotten and yeah it makes you feel it's a really sensory it's a very potent sensory show. That's a good word, yeah. Very sensory indeed. Uh mm-hmm. did 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 you have a favorite case? <sighs> I don't know. The or a favorite episode maybe <gasps> instead. They're all really fun. I liked uh, I like the one with the horses. That was a neat one. The one with the horses was an interesting one for sure. Uh, that one was the, that one. See, to me, that case seemed to be one that didn't fit as much. It that one seemed yeah, more Scooby Doo like because it it, it, those... it was like the 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 phantom horse rider that mm-hmm. is you know it's it looks like some knight in you know the the black knight in his yep. demonish writing robes or whatever mm. the hell he's yeah, wearing yeah it, it is a very like Scooby Doo Scooby kind of Doo villain would, yeah uh, um but then the the story behind it is it's more with the show yeah it, it does have that like it's a world of like horse jockeys which are like kind of a whimsical cute thing like they turn them into lawn ornaments for a reason i guess and it's so preposterous like the guy he breaks his legs and they put his horse's legs on him like he's just walking around on horse legs that's why he's so tall it's it's bonkers and it's it's such a ridiculous premise but it still has that personal story to it because it's all of olive's backstory and you really like Mm -hmm. feel for her like oh that's who you are and that's how you got to where you are today and you have this whole secret life you literally like boxed up in a safety deposit box and you don't touch anymore yeah i think for me 
my favorite one was um I I want w- 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 to say it was the scratch and sniff one because that's the one with the sewer yes! dude, right? Yes, I really like that character. And that's uh, and something I, I I want more of him in season two. Hope, hopefully, yeah, they put more of him in there. I think he's back. Like I had forgotten a lot of the kind of ongoing mythology of the show beyond just like this is the magic and this is how it works. I forgot that Paul Rubens shows up as this like scent expert who like meets chuck and smells like oh there's something different about you smell of death yeah and so he's trying like he's narrowing in on were you dead once because this smell can't be anything else like i forgot about him and i forgot about like the mystery of oh just like ned wondering like where his dad went and like It turns out that Chuck's mom, she never really had a mom. It was her aunt, who her aunt, air quotes, that was really her mom the whole time. And that ongoing stuff I had forgotten about. And that was was neat to be surprised with it again. Yeah. Uh, Ned's story is really sad where he's just kind of abandoned. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, like I, 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 I like, I mean, I'm always one for a more connected story i like it yeah monster of the week can get boring very fast or detective case of the week uh in terms of this show Mm -hmm. can kind of get boring um and it is when they bring in these recurring (laughs) characters like oh here's the guy that recognized the scent of death on Mm -hmm. you and now he's back he's like uh oh so i've been like i took a shaving of the dog's hair because he also has the same yes. smell so i'm wondering if by studying him i can figure out what's re- what's up with you but i could only get so far with that so i need your you know and there is this overall kind of mystery or i i guess not mystery to us as viewers but to mm-hmm. some of these characters figuring it yeah. out um or, 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 you know, Olive trying to figure out who is this new woman? Yeah. Uh, why aren't they making out? Because they should <laughs> love each other. Yeah, it is. It, that's, again, more tension that the show, like, baked right into itself in the beginning. Like, you're the audience is going to know a lot of things that the characters don't know. And you're going to watch them try and figure it out. Yeah, which is, it, it can be a lot of fun. Um, I... I Yes, that's a form of irony. Yeah, comedic irony, I guess, mm-hmm. in this 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 sense. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like I I like those. I I I guess steps forward that the yes. show t- takes. Like I want more of that. Mm-hmm. You, you know, I want more of all of trying to figure out wh- who. Um, who Chuck really is and what happened mm-hmm. to Chuck. More of this sewer d- dweller mole yeah. man type of mm. character uh, to, to kind of figure figure things out. But then I, 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 I mean, I feel like he will figure things mm. out and then be like, I like you. I'm going to keep your secret yeah. because I like you. Uh, and then somehow help, like, like, I want to see him continue to help them, right? Yeah. Um, the show I does... want to see, what What was the detective's name? Oh, Emerson? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I want to see more progression with him. Yeah. Because he's, he's more there to just be the voice of reason for mm-hmm. most of it. Just like, oh, don't, don't bother me with this wacky shit, you know? <laughs> like, he just, there's so much personal drama going on around him, and he's like, please, I just want to eat a slice of pie and solve this murder and, and get the reward money and knitting. keep that cycle going. Yeah. He's so great. There is more of him in season two, I remember, because in the season finale, it's revealed, like, he has a daughter out there that he's not oh, wow. close with. And so in season two, you kind of find out who she is and where she went and, like, what their relationship is. Yeah, this show does I, a good. He's. Mm-hmm. I, I was just gonna say he's a main character, but he's the one I feel. I feel like we got the least of. Yeah, and that's kind of being there the all the point. time. Yeah, that's kind of the point because like he doesn't. He's not a sharer like everybody else is. Like he only he's there to do the job, and that's it. And like he's a man with a lot of passions, but like 
Like, he loves knitting, but he doesn't talk about how he loves knitting. And the narrator's just there to tell us. The narr- yeah. I love I that he loves knitting books. and <laughs> pop-up books. Like, even, like, the grizzled old sarcastic detective loves knitting and pop-up books in this world. That's the kind of world it is. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 the scenes when they're, like, they're, mm-hmm. like, in, in the windmill e- e- episode. Yes. When they're dragging out the culprit. And he's just sitting there with the big cigar in his mouth, and he's counting m- 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 money as they're, you know, you're under arrest, blah, 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 blah. He's just like, hey, 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 I got me some money, 100, 200, 300, you know. <laughs> and then later he goes home and he's knitting mittens. Yeah, it's and he's, it's, it's, he's, he's this, like, sleazy <laughs> private eye who's mm-hmm. super private about his own life. But when he goes home, yeah, he's just sitting there knitting reading pop-up books it's great (laughs) yeah i remember that you learn more about him and the show this show is really good at introducing like little recurring characters outside of how good the main cast is and how like Mm -hmm. the the episodic murder of the week characters can be fun like there's i think there's more of the medical examiner in season two if i remember correctly he's fantastic or even if there's not more like he keeps doing the same thing of like you guys are up to something (laughs) Because well, at the, at the yeah. end of this, he kind of demanded rent, right? He yeah. was like, I know you guys are doing something you're not supposed to. So, But it, but it doesn't seem bad enough for me to stop. So if you pay me off, like, this is going to be fine. We'll have yeah. a working relationship. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> which I, I, and he has the, the ugly... Oh, I love Christmas that sweater. sweater that his niece made, and the and Emerson just goes, "Dude, that like that is a fucking ugly sweatshirt." <laughs> it's fantastic. He's fun. I love Molly Shannon as that candy shop owner down the street. I uh-huh. think she comes back, and I love the I homeopathic would like to see more medicine of her. guy. I think she pops up as like a recurring antagonist, just as like a business rival to yeah. the pie shop. And I love the homeopathic medicine guy. I forgot about him, but the second he appeared back on screen, I'm like, oh yes, you. This guy. He, I like him a lot. And he's like, they have recurring characters for different reasons. Like they have Paul Rubens is there as for like kind of the mystery, like you know what's the this you're coming back from the dead that's so weird why does that happen like he's an antagonist for that and then molly shannon is an antagonist just for like the business side of things and then um raul esparza is there for just like a social he's there to move the social story forward because he's in love with olive and olive doesn't Mm -hmm. like really figure that out until he's like he's he's the tension for olive who has her heart set on trying to get ned to like her um and and uh but but he the the salesman dude also really likes her um my internet just dropped out uh we may have to take a short break and uh we will be right back awesome hello we are back we are back uh had a little bit of technical difficulties there. I kind of ended the conversation real fast and was like, okay, we'll be back. Uh, We are (laughs) back now. What happened is our stream, my internet died. I touched it. It came (laughs) back to life. And now if I touch it again, it'll be dead forever. Yeah, and if Uh, you eat the internet, it's going to taste gross to you. (laughs) Yeah, don't eat the internet, Kyle. (laughs) Just a big um, scoop of internet all the mode. But yeah, so that 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 all the modem. A... I'm sorry, I couldn't <laughs> yes. let that pass me by. Great, thank you, <laughs> uh, fate for for the <laughs> Melissa's modem joke. <laughs> um, so that took a couple minutes. I don't remember what I was talking about. So we're oh. just we're just gonna kind of start fresh. Start with a new question. What? Um, I've got one for you. Go for it, Melissa. What did you think about the musical aspects of this show? Because those were actually, I remember it being more musical than it was. Yeah. So I, I was, was expecting like, more. Yeah. I think because um, I talked that up because I remembered it so well. 
Yeah, you are a fan of m- musicals, so that makes sense that that would be something that sticks mm-hmm. out in your mind. I I didn't hate them. I don't know if they were necessary, though. The, yeah, it is like... If that makes sense. And I, I, I did immediately recognize what's her, what's her name from uh, Little Shop of... Ellen Green! Oh, horrors, yeah. I was like, yeah, oh... It's that girl. I remember it's when I told Lee you. Seymour. <laughs> when I told you about that movie, I'm like, it's got the lady from Pushing Daisies. And you're like, I haven't seen Pushing Daisies. I'm like, okay. Oh, well, now here's okay. two things you have to watch. There you go. Yeah, you go. I don't. It does feel like that might be the one spot where they are kind of gilding the lily about it. Like, this seems like a show that could definitely have a musical episode. Yes. It's that kind of show. But instead it has like, a number here and there and they're not but like sometimes big... the narration rhymes as well yeah. uh so i mean so that stuff is in there i think it it, it works within the world mm-hmm. i i think creatively because there were literally only two times it happened one was super short mm-hmm. it it just it felt odd it felt out of place which is I... strange to say in a world <laughs> that is so odd <laughs> Yeah, it's. It seems like the sort of thing that should either be done like once with like really great meaning behind it, and the and the times they use it, it's like when Olive sings "Hopelessly Devoted to You." It's really sweet. Like it's a really great expression of her character, and mm-hmm. it's a nice number. And I like that she keeps getting like interrupted. Like the guy comes in to like, you know, hi, I'm your floor waxer. I'm here there. to wax the floors. <laughs> I like that she's trying to sing this big number about no matter what happens, even if I face all these obstacles, I'm still going to be in love with you. And she keeps facing these obstacles to singing the song. Yeah, like they're great scenes individually. But it does seem like the sort of yeah. thing that should be like, if you're going to do it, maybe turn it up to 11, like the way the rest of the show operates. Yeah, exactly. I I, I, I think because uh, that the second one that pl- the, the big one that plays in my mind was kind of the end of the episode. And it was the, the, there's a lot of TV shows that do that like montage yeah. scene at the end and there's some kind of song playing mm-hmm. and stuff like that this show did its own version of that by doing it as a musical <laughs> number like yeah. having the characters actually sing it mm-hmm. um so it, it I, I i think in terms of that it's like yeah something like that is kind of to be expected but again i, I just I, I don't think they did it enough for me to feel like it felt familiar within the world yeah i wonder if the cast just wound up with a couple like famous songstresses in it and he's like well i can't have Kristen chenoweth and ellen green and have them not sing i I am intrigued to the background of it like i said like it feels like it fits in but like no fill out that space like really it's like you're you're like you're trying to fit a puzzle piece in there and it's the right shape puzzle piece but it's like too small like you it's the same cookie cutter size puzzle piece but from a different puzzle you're like that goes there but like it needs to fit in bigger yeah <laughs> what, what what is this a center for ants <laughs> um, yeah like i i i think i would have liked it more if they did an entire episode yeah of that i think that would have been really cool um and i i i i think i would have been fine with just one uh-huh. you, you know it's not 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 something that needed to be recurring or have multiple mm-hmm. musical episodes um but just like like community did the paintball oh, e- episodes yeah. for a while or f- flash and super girl did their mm-hmm. m- musical episodes they only had one in each show but if you watch them all back to back it's one it's one big long storyline you know it's a cross over um you know something like that where it was just more of it but contained i felt like would have served the show a lot better and i 
I think that also would have worked for there's one opening to an episode. Every episode opens with a flashback to like young Ned, Mm -hmm. which is also something I didn't remember. Like I remember the pilot being set up like that, but I forgot like all the check ins with him back at the boarding school. I I liked those. Yeah. Yeah. There's one of those that I think is entirely in rhyme. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you guys should just instead of doing this, just do an entire rhyming episode for everything, because this seems like absolutely feasible like creatively yeah. and narratively like oh of course you live in a world where you would just rhyme one day i think it was the <laughs> jockey one i think it was the one with the horses that the narration uh-huh. rhymed if i remember correctly i don't know did did what, what did you think of those uh flashback or like opening scenes here's ned when he's younger figuring out his powers and stuff like that I didn't really remember them. And this show was full of a lot of things like I didn't remember, but was delighted to see again. Like all these recurring characters were great, but like, I don't know if this one is as necessary. Like it it does a good job of adding to the, um, the, the storybook and like kind of fairy tale feel of everything. And I like them. I just wonder if we need them every single episode. I don't know. Especially because this is like kind of an ensemble show and we're only going back to young Ned. If we had young flashbacks to everybody, I'd kind of like to see something like that. Yeah, something like that might be neat. I, 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 I think I, I liked them mm-hmm. and I liked them a lot. I think I want something out of them that I yes. haven't gotten yet. Yeah, that's it. Like there, it gives you some character building to Ned but there's so much more the show needs to do and to spend like five minutes on that at the beginning of every episode. Like, Like, can we, can we work on somebody else, please? I kind of want to know what happened to Ned's, uh, head gear, best friend. Yes. I, I loved that one. I really like that. He has this one friend that he bonds with at boarding school and they're going to go out and frolic like boys and jump in the leaves. But Ned jumps in the leaves and they all come back to life. And his friend, like, freaks out and runs away and the narrator says that later in life he justified it to himself as those were just magic leaves yeah, and of like, course I... this world has one guy out there wandering around like magic I saw, leaves i saw magic leaves once and i guess that's the truth <laughs> so that's what weed is <laughs> no um but like i i yeah like i kind of want to see that character come back like i want to see more Besides the backstory of like, oh, this is his dad mm-hmm. abandoning him. This yeah. is, you know, him being separated from Chuck. This is him, you know, like, I want to see more of that come back and yes. matter in the present day. Yeah. In the sense of, yeah, like, here's a character from his past that came back mm-hmm. and who knows his power, right? Yeah. Like, here's what happened to uh, the, yeah, his his best <laughs> friend who chalked it up to magic leaves but is now hearing word about the you, 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 this yeah. detective that is solving all of these weird cases and he's like huh i knew that guy yeah that's it, weird it those lighter. things came back to life he could solve these cases if he could get the dead people to come back t- to life and tell yeah. them you know that I, might I or know. might not be a season two thing. See, I'm trying to remember what happens in the yeah. next season because I know that there is a lot of the stuff that does carry through and get better fleshed out. And I'm going to like that's immediately not to rewatch say I season two. I want that two. exact thing to happen, yeah, yeah. but just you know something. Yeah, my brother gave me the DVDs for the entire series, so like I didn't have to, but I am now immediately going to start watching season yeah. two again because I have to have this thing as completed as it can be for me now. I think season two is also on CW. Oh, nice. C- the, I mean, I, which I guess is the whole show. It got canceled after its second yeah. season, right? So R. season two was 13 episodes, I believe. Season one mm-hmm. is nine. So that's what, 22, 23, tw- 22 episodes, mm-hmm. uh, which is actually not bad. Yeah. So I, I, I wanted to talk about this before we kind uh-huh. of wrap up here the show did get canceled i do think this show is fantastic 
Yeah. Um, a, lo- a, lo- a lot of people I've heard describe the show as brilliant or genius or mm-hmm. stuff like that. And I think I would agree with them. Though, I think because the show is so formulaic, I can understand mm-hmm. why. Like, I, 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 I don't know. Like, I... As much as I want to know more and like, mm-hmm. oh, oh, what does Chuck, th- is she going to find out that her aunt is actually her mom? Yeah. You, you know, what's happening th- th- there? Or is is there going to be some magical thing that happens where they can finally make out yeah. and get down to business, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, it, 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 like, is is there going to be something like that? And I, I don't, I, I want to know that stuff, but I think also after nine episodes, I'm kind of just fine. Like, I was like, that was good. <laughs> Moving on. Um, but at the same time, but yeah, like, I, I also wouldn't mind more mm-hmm. episodes too. I, I, I just... I I think I want them to kick it up a notch and give yeah. me a little bit more out of the show like, than just this case of the week. This is a show that has been formulaic, but you can see where if it decided to completely do away with the formula, it could like everything it else it fantastic. has is still plenty to stand on. Yeah. Yeah. Um oddly enough, there was a show and I I I think I think the show was awful um or if if memory serves the show was awful there was a like a superhero related show called the cape have you oh, heard yes. of that have you ever heard of that I've heard of it yeah I I remember I watched it a long time ago and I think I ended up liking it more than I expected to, but it was still mm. one of those shows that, that I'm yeah. sure if I go show back that that it was awful Mm -hmm. um but oddly enough that like this show kind of made me want to go back and watch that just because of how like weird and whimsical it is yeah this show also made me want to revisit like this was on during a period where i was watching a lot of television Mm -hmm. and i watched so many things during that period that were there and that were cool for a while and then they died and like if i loved revisiting this let me go back and watch like I don't know, New Amsterdam or something like that. Like what other canceled shows from my teenage years are really fun to revisit? So I I guess in the same type of vein, if the show had continued past season two, um, like, or or I I guess for, for me as, Mm -hmm. as, as well, what I'm hoping for in season two, like what, where would you want this show to, to go? Would you want it to change its formula? Would you want them to do more of one thing, less I, of another? One thing I was really curious about, and that I don't know if I want this to happen, but I want the characters to at least be as curious about it as I am, which is, if Ned can do this, is there somebody else out there that can yeah. do another weird thing and it doesn't have to get full on x-men with it but like i would like them to brush up against like an arch nemesis maybe not somebody else with powers but the potential of oh we have this case we can't explain how do we know this isn't also magic and maybe it does or doesn't have like a real practical explanation but i want them to think about it more like what other weird stuff is going on around here that is also a secret That, that would be fun to explore um yeah, I, I I think I kind of want the less formulaic stuff. I wouldn't mm-hmm. mind like two part episodes That'd where a case nice. yeah. t- takes longer than you know. Yeah, I'd 40 like a minutes big case to wrap up. Mm-hmm. Um, I I would like a case that hits closer to home. Yeah, I think for the characters, like what if one of the aunts dies? They dies, you know. Um. And and so yeah yeah it's stuff like that and they have to just like I, I want I want the cases to tie in more to the plot of mm-hmm. of or I, I I guess not the plot but just the character development the character yeah, relationships and, like, and what's gonna happen with that yeah like from case to case I don't know if they're that much different than each other. Like, I don't know if they've grown very much. Like, the like revisiting her past with the horse jockeying, like, 
had an effect on Olive. Sure. Uh, and like the second episode where the magic, <laughs> like the dandelion car, that's yeah. a weird one. Where like they're put in like these body bags and then Ned and Chuck kiss each other through like these plastic bags that they're in. You can tell that like, oh, we can try this in our personal life as well. And we'll just kiss each other through this plastic kitchen wrap. Like, I want there to be like some murder that has like a lasting effect on them and that they really like learned something or it affects them in some way like it has some personal stakes to it yeah um something like that i think is what i i I would want them to explore Mm -hmm. more good stuff good stuff i don't know i i i think i think that's about it for me that's all i wanted to talk about and say did you have (sighs) any other questions or things you wanted to bring up this is there's so much going on in this show like i if i don't stop it here i will have to be talking for another hour about all these weird little jokes because it's so funny too we didn't talk about very much about how sharp and great the dialogue is Yeah, very well written uh just continually witty Mm -hmm. it's it's so visually great like you don't often get shows that have incredible style and substance all in one package, and this mm-hmm. has got it. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, well, we already did our recommendations. I guess we I did. did say I would mention um, Six Feet Under. So I, I guess this also oh. goes along the lines of what I would want them to explore. What, what were you <laughs> okay? Say? Okay, I th- I th- I. You know, let me just Google it. I think Brian Fuller also worked on Six Feet Under, and I thought I spotted like a Six Feet Under reference in here that I'm gonna have to run past you. Maybe I I I watched it a while back. Um, I watched all six seasons, and season one was really good, and then I think the show went downhill from maybe not there. But you've um, seen, um, you watched the entirety of it. You saw the finale, yes. right? Yeah. Okay. Maybe, maybe he didn't like create it, but he worked on it, or there's some sort of a connection to it. Maybe okay, he wrote so an in, episode or something. So I know that in the series finale of Six Feet Under, it flashes forward and it shows how every character dies. And yes. one of the characters has a stroke and he's trying to like tell the person he's with like my arm's numb, but it, like it keeps devolving because he's having the stroke and it's just he's just like numb arm, numb arm, numb arm. I remember that being like a joke like I would see on TV blogs. People would bring up NARM. And if there is the episode with the windmills and they go to the national area of retired mills or <laughs> NARM. NARM. And like is is that a reference to Six Feet Under? Like, did this guy also work on Six Feet Under, or is it just like here's a I nod mean, to the show I like? It might be a nod to the show because they deal with a lot of the mm-hmm. same subject matter, life and death, right? Um, which I think the show Six Feet Under deals with, like they 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 go in depth of like how do people deal with it, like how do they actually yeah. deal with that. Do they cope with family members? Do they cope with sex? Do they cope with drugs? Do they lash out in all sorts of different ways? Um, But yeah, like I, I kind of want a not to that extent, but I want a little bit more of that from pushing daisies. It's so whimsical. It's so funny and witty that I kind of lose this sense of actual weight to some of these stakes, Um, which is kind of why I wanted something to hit closer to home. Like I I want, I I want them to actually deal with this life and death stuff, not just be like, it's magic, magic leaves. (laughs) I agree with you. And first of all, um, I did Google it. He did. Brian Fuller didn't. It didn't seem like he worked on uh, Six Feet Under. He created Dead Like Me. That's what I'm thinking of. The other premium cable death based show from around that same time period. There you go. Dead Like Me is another show I remember being good and like people talked about while it was on. But now nobody's talking about I've it. I've never even heard of it. <laughs> That's another recommendation. Check out Dead Like Me. It's a show about. Um, a woman who dies in this crazy accident, like a 
space station explodes like and all this does. debris is and all this debris is falling to earth and she is knocked dead by the toilet seat from the space station <laughs> so it's this crazy sudden death and when she a crappy way to go out yeah yeah and she wakes death. up and in her afterlife she has become a grim reaper and you are a grim reaper for other people who died the same way you did. So she is out there reaping Except the souls of other people that die in crazy freak accidents. Oh, I, I was I was going to say she has to find someone who <laughs> died from a, a space station toilet seat falling to earth. And <laughs> it's just it's the general category of crazy freak accidents. And there's other people like, OK, I died back in the plague. Now I reap victims of, you know, a not plague, the plague, but other serious disease. diseases. Yeah. Like, there's one episode oh, okay. where they meet a woman who died in the Titanic who's like, yeah, I got nothing to do now because nobody's dying in shipwrecks hardly anymore. I have really <laughs> slow work days. It's a fun show. Interesting. But, yeah, I agree with what you're saying. Like, there's so much social tension in the show, which is great. But I wish the death had more of an effect and it did have that gravity. And, like, could we just get a, a tiny little sliver of trauma somewhere yeah <laughs> yeah like could something could we see something close to devastation and it's such a bright candy colored world and this feels weird to say like i want it to get darker but i know the show yeah. would be able it's... to take something like that and do something really beautiful with it yeah it's not it's not that i want it darker you know you mm -hmm. know i want more death blah 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 no but like I... like you don't want it to be gritty but you want there to be areas more where emotional it has more weight it to has some more of the decisions yeah. yeah um something like that would mm -hmm. be nice but unfortunately six feet under in my opinion just devolved into into a show about who's fucking who so i think i remember hearing that like it just got kind of soap opera y towards the end i mean i mean yeah i mean it, it was always I, I i feel like it was always kind of like that but just the the themes in the plot or lines was about oh who's dating who and who's having sex with who and it was just like this is not what the show is about why is it why is this even ha I, I don't care about any of this mm-hmm uh, so they they had a really fantastic plot line in season one, and they just dropped it and never went back oh. to it. I was just like, I want that. That's what I want. I hate when shows do that. But I digress. Uh, I guess that wraps us up now. Yeah. I, yeah, I think we've reached a good stopping point. We've recommended other things. We've talked about what we love about the show and what we wish – what we wish it would have lived to do more of. Exactly. I think the show had... Let me open up my Yeah, notes. I think after its two seasons, the show tried a couple comic books. And I don't... And Interesting. I don't know how those went over. And then, of course, you're missing so much stuff from the show trying to make it into mm -hmm. a comic book. But, oh, I might try and track those down sometime. Cool. So I... It's my turn to do the pitches mm -hmm. for this next week of what we will read. I'm also going to kind of do uh, yes. romance, Valentine's Day stuff, because uh, it is that's something that's outside of my comfort zone. Good. <laughs> and it would be really weird if I didn't do it and just left Melissa to be the only one, because this episode is coming out on, like, the Wednesday or like like a, like a week or, or so before Valentine's Day, so it's not even on Valentine's Day. Mine is a little bit more closer to Valentine's Day. Uh, so three pitches as usual. I got a comic book, an anime, and a manga. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, actually, I think a comic book and two animes. Oh, okay. Actually, because I decided that last one i was like it's gonna be 20 something episodes i don't know, I don't know. um so pitch number one spider-man blue oh um this is a graphic novel all about spider-man probably in his, or i guess not probably since i already know but kind of in his early years um this takes place after the death of Gwen Stacy. Oh, okay. Uh, and it's, I, I think a lot of the narration is him writing a le letter to her oh. after she's d d dead. 
um, and just kind of spilling his guts to to her and being like, I I love I loved you. You were the first woman I loved. Um, now I'm with Mary Jane, you know, so on and oh. so forth. Um, so a little bit more on the sad side, but still romantic in the sense that he's writing a letter to the woman that he once loved. Uh, so that's pitch number one. I will say, though, that there's other books in, I guess, what is kind of called the Color series. Okay. There's Daredevil Yellow, oh, Hulk yes. g- 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 Gray, and Captain America White, uh, and then Spider-Man Blue. Um, I've I've read Hulk Gray and Daredevil Yellow, but I have not read Spider-Man Blue yet. Okay. Um, and uh, it's Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale. They're the creative team. I really like them as a creative duo. Uh, they've written and drawn one of my favorite Batman books, oh. The Long Halloween. Okay, it's a yeah. Fan- fantastic book. Um, so that's Spider Man Blue. I'm interested in reading that one, pitch number one. Pitch number two, however, uh, is a... I I think I recommended this back on an episode when we did Kids on the Slope. Okay. I think it was one of the, hey, if you like that, you should also check this out. This is called Your Lie in April. Yeah. Uh, It is a manga, but I've... Uh, I want to pitch uh, the anime. I believe it's only 12 or 13 episodes. And it is about a young boy who is a concert pianist. Um, and he is very st- st- very strict about, like, I need to play thing. I need to, I need to pl- a pl- a play thing. I cannot speak. <laughs> um, that uh, that th- that that is not the type of relationship mm. we are talking about. Um, he is a concert pianist, and he is very much about playing sheet music as it's dictated to him. Like that's how the music was written, so that's how you have to play mm-hmm. it. And along the way, he meets uh, this girl who's a violinist and she's a very free spirit just kind of play what you feel i don't need sheet music i'm just gonna make this beautiful sound and they become friends and start doing concerts together um and i will stop there in fear of spoiling things but it's this push and pull of uh, like him getting out of his shell, but also kind of finding out some, uh, some troubling news about her. Mm-hmm. So uh, that was an in- interesting one. It's also kind of sad too. I, mm. I will warn you on that. Uh, my last pitch, pitch number three. I've seen this around. Uh-huh. I I I haven't seen it it's an anime called my love story oh i have no idea what it's about uh uh, or anything like that so i'm going to pull it up right now on uh wikipedia and see if we can't figure this out um it from what it looks like um it looks like it's this girl and a guy it seems like the guy is a little bit older i don't know i have no idea what's happening my love story two exclamation marks very exciting Um, yeah is a my love story is a japanese romantic comedy manga series written by uh kazune kawahara and illustrated by aruko the manga was serialized in blah 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 the story the story follows uh Takio Goda, a tall and muscular student who doesn't have much luck with women, as every girl he likes end up ends up falling for his best friend, who is charming and good looking. Uh, this all changes when he saves uh, Rinko Yamato, uh, a petite mm. shy girl um, who, above all other expectations, falls in love with Takio. Uh, beginning a unique love story. Um, 
So it it is a manga, but I wanted to watch the okay. anime, uh, which is twenty four episodes. Uh, they're half an hour long, so they should fly by pretty quickly. Um, th- it's a fairly recent anime. Mm-hmm. I think it's from two thousand fifteen is when it was coming out. So I'm four years old now. Um, but uh, I've I like I, I I haven't heard anything, but I've heard it like within conversation. Um, and I've I've heard that it's pretty okay. funny. Okay. So that that is pitch number three. Um only one I have seen is Your Lie in April. Well I So pitch number one was Spider Man mm-hmm. Blue, pitch number two, Your Lie in April, and pitch number three, my love story. I definitely want to go with Spider Man Blue. I've been Spider Man wait- Blue. I've been waiting for something like this because I've read Spider Man in other things. I have never read a solo Spider Man title. And okay. he's known for having these great loves of his life. And I feel like I don't I don't know enough about comics to know what those stories should be. Like, oh, well, if you want to learn about him and Gwen, you read this book. And if you want to re- learn about him and MJ, you read this book. Like, it seems to have – it seems to be big generally, but there aren't, like, specific stories. And finally someone brings me, like, if you want to read the romance about Spider-Man, it's the specific story. It's that one. So thank goodness. And this sounds go. really fun because it gets to have both of them in there. I well, like that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like that it's a period in his life where he's with one person and, like, like he's Still with MJ and, like, back on, reflecting yeah. on Gwen. Like, that sounds nice. It sounds sad, but, like, a good, interesting read. And I always like superhero stories that are a little bit more on the personal side. Because, yeah. like, I know Spider-Man. You don't need to show me him slinging around the city fighting the Green Goblin because I've seen it so many times. Like, I'm excited to mm-hmm. dive deeper into this thing that I know is also part of his story, but I've seen so much less. Yeah. Well, hopefully it ends up being pretty yeah. good. I think it will be. Um, that is what we will read for this next week. I'm sure you guys can find it. Um at your library or local yeah, comic book store. It is on Comixology Unlimited. I, did, did you look and see? I, I, I yeah, didn't I think it actually is. Yeah. look. Um, that would be per- perfect if it's on Comixology Unlimited. Um, let me see. Spider-Man Blue with an E. It yes. is perfect i i don't think i even noticed that when i was looking up stuff so perfect if, if you guys have comiXology unlimited you can read along with us at home we hope that is what you guys do uh yeah patreon.com slash the whatnots uh, if you liked this episode, if you like our podcast or any of the yeah. other shows that we do, you can support us for a dollar. Join us. Um, join us on on there. All that money that we get from your support goes back mm. into these shows to help make them bigger and better. Hopefully things like uh, internet cutting <laughs> in and out won't happen as often yeah. or uh, Melissa getting bigger or smaller, which thankfully didn't happen. Oh, maybe I finally uh, normalized today. So, um, I I did I I haven't looked at the it yet, but I did think I saw an option that I could do to maybe fix it. Maybe I turned it on and didn't realize it. Uh-huh. I don't know. We'll see. I have no idea if it's actually going to help or not, but uh, we'll see. I'll experiment, Hope, and hopefully you guys can. Uh, Stick with us. Give us your life savings. All that good stuff, you know. Um, These episodes of the Whatnots Review Show usually come out on Wednesdays. If you want to get them early, Patreon is the way to do that. So go ahead and sign up for a dollar, and you guys can start getting some cool rewards for that. Uh, That being said, Melissa, where can the cool people find you baking all sorts of pies and stuff <laughs> cool you guys can find me on twitter and instagram at yo kyle springer 
Uh, if you guys want updates with this show, it's at the whatnots on Twitter. And I guess we hope to see you guys next week for Spider-Man Blue. Enjoy it. Uh, we will see you guys next week. Adios, guys. Bye.